All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Policy Matters, the latest On the Mind podcast segment. In these videos, we'll be discussing the specifics of new government policy proposals. Though most of you who listen to our programming on a regular basis are used to our editorial commentary, this segment will be strictly non-editorial and will focus exclusively on the details of specific proposals for informative purposes. For the first Policy Matters segment, we'll be taking a look at the College for All Act a bill proposed on April 3rd of this year by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders with co-sponsorship from several Democratic colleagues, most notably including Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren. This bill addresses two primary goals, the provision of free education at all community colleges to students from families of all income levels, and the provision of the same at state public four-year universities for students from families with total annual incomes of $125,000 or less. In order to achieve these aims, the College for All Act proposes a division of the cost of education between the federal and state governments. Under this act, the federal government would provide two-thirds of the cost of college tuition for students, with the remaining one-third to be provided by the state in which the college or university is located. According to a press release issued by the office of Senator Sanders, the two-thirds of tuition provided by the federal government would amount to an annual expense of $47 billion. Also included in the bill is a substantial restructuring of the existing federal student loan program. Under the terms of the College for All Act, students seeking new federal loans would be able to secure them at an interest rate of 2.32%, as opposed to the current rate of 4.32%. Students with existing debt secured originally at higher rates would be allowed to refinance at the new 2.32% rate. Included in the restructuring of federal loan programs is a provision that would require all interest profits from student loans to be reinvested into other student aid programs, including Pell Grants. Speaking of Pell Grants, the College for All Act takes what has been called a first-dollar approach to college tuition. Under the Act, tuition aid is extended based on the total tuition amount listed by the school. Students who receive scholarships, grants, or other public or private assistance for college would not have their tuition assistance prorated to reflect the tuition after these other sources of aid. Instead, money received beyond the total cost of fees and tuition would still be extended to students for living expenses during their college years. The Act also addresses the process of applying for and receiving financial aid by streamlining the application process and eliminating the requirement for students to apply for each year of college separately. A final provision of the College for All Act also expands existing federal work-study programs, providing more funding with the goal of using the programs to help a wider range of U.S. students. Funding for the expanded cost of tuition is also outlined in the College for All Act. Under its terms, Federal tax increases on investment and investment deriv derivatives would be used to collect the needed funding for the educational programs. The Congressional Budget Office has not yet released independent estimates on the cost of the programs or the ability of the tax increases to fund them. In order to qualify for the expanded federal funding for tuition and other fees, states would be required to meet a strict set of guidelines for academic performance and other metrics, including adhering to guidelines meant to keep tuition costs lower while reducing college dependence on lower paid faculty members. States would not be able to use federal money to fund merit-based scholarships or the salaries of administrative faculty members. The newly introduced College for All Act bears substantial similarities to a bill of the same name also introduced by Senator Sanders in May of 2015. At the time, no senatorial colleagues co-sponsored the bill's original incarnation. And that, my friends, is the College for All Act Explained. Thank you all so much for listening to our latest segment. If you liked this format, please give us a like, subscription, and comment on YouTube to let us know, or share our video on social media with your friends and family so that other people can learn more about the provisions of the College for All Act. Thank you so much, and have a great day.